Hi, my name is Don Petkel and I teach in Biosystems Engineering in the Faculty of Agriculture and Food Sciences at the University of Manitoba. And I'm here to talk to you about technology in agriculture. Why do we need technology? Well, it's to optimize our yields and our quality of our crops. It's also for the protection of our environment. It's to reduce our costs and overall better management. So how do we do this? Well, think about it. Our fields have variability. It's not all the same out there. There's different soil types, different areas with weed pressure and drainage. And we've known this for a long time. If you go back to our ancestors way back 100 years ago with the oxen and the plow, they just farmed really small fields. And so they were able to keep track of it really well because it was just a small area and you could always figure out where you were. It's like grandma with her garden and growing potatoes in the corner over there because it always grows better. But as we got mechanization, our tractors got bigger, our fields got bigger. We've gotten to a point now that fields, everything is so big, it's really hard to keep track of it. We know there's variability, but it's hard to find, and it's hard to go back to those same areas. We need to be able to position ourselves, and that's where GPS comes in, and we now have that technology. The other thing is we need other types of technology to make these changes. It's one thing to say we have variability, and we can position it, we also have to be able to have technology to make those changes. And the last thing is economics. It's got to be profitable for us. We got to be able to make money at it. So looking at global positioning systems, or our GPS, we all have either one of these, which I use for geocaching, or you might have one in the car, which you use to get to the store or to a friend's place. They're not very accurate, 10 to 20 feet, but they're good enough and they work really well. For farming though, we need more accuracy. And we now have things like RTK or real-time kinematic, which gives us accuracy to less than an inch. So now we can position ourselves on the earth. And not only that, we can go back to the same spot year after year. So if we want to make changes, we know where we're doing it and we can go back to check. Other things that GPS give us are things like auto guidance. We can actually use them to steer the tractors so we can go straight down the field. That helps us with things like spraying crops, whereas we used to overlap quite a bit, and now we only do a little bit because it goes really straight. Another thing we use is GIS, or Geographic Information Systems. This is really just our computer system, and it gives us a database and a place to store all this information we're collecting. We get things like soil maps, weed maps, yield maps, or drainage out of this, and how we do it is we make these maps when we're we're soil, we make a map where we want to put different fertilizers and then we check our yield and we're actually able to see now what we've done and how it has affected it. And year to year we can look at that. The next thing we look at is variable rate technology. Sometimes we need to vary our rates because we have differences in the field. We can vary our rates in seed populations, so plant different amounts of seeds for some crops. We can vary fertilizer. So instead of just applying fertilizer over the whole field, we apply different rates to different spots where it needs it. And also chemical application. So if we have weeds, instead of spraying the whole field, we sp spray different areas. And it, today we can actually even spray different chemicals in the same pass on different spots. The last thing is remote sensing. And remote sensing is just gathering data without actually being there. We already have that with our weather data. We have environmental stations. And now we actually use it for farming, but we collect it differently, either from an airplane or from a satellite. And what we're actually collecting is data from the sun. The sun shines down on the earth with different energy waves, and they bounce off. They're either absorbed or reflected off things on earth. And so we just collect that information. You can think about it in a way of our vision. If you look at your lawn in summer when it's nice and green, what's happening is we're seeing the green color from the lawn coming out to our eyes, and it looks green to us. If it gets dry and the plant is not healthy, it turns to a yellow or a brown. And what's happening is it's just the yellows and browns are reflecting into our eyes. So we with our eyes can see remotely whether the grass is healthy or sick. Well, if we can see it with our eyes, we can also see it with a machine. And the advantage is with a machine, instead of seeing it in a narrow band like our eyes do, we can see it in a very wide band. 
we can see infrared to ultraviolet. So a machine now can see that, and what we see in these ultraviolet to infrared ranges, we can understand different things than just the health of the plant. We can actually see the different waves, we can tell differences in what type of plant, maybe comparing a wheat or a bean plant and know what plant it is, or maybe a weed plant. And that gives us an opportunity to treat things like weeds and spray them when we see them in the field rather than just overall treat the field, which really gives us an advantage with technology. So what technology in agriculture actually does for us, it gives us much better control of our operation. It gives us an opportunity to use less fertilizers, less chemicals. It gives us an opportunity for better production and better quality. And lastly, it gives us an opportunity to be much better to our environment. So that's it for today on technology and agriculture and what it can do for us.